Good morning and welcome to our service on this first day of May, this first Sunday in May. And we have the joy and delight of being able to worship together, to praise the Lord together, to hear from his word and to bring our requests and our thanksgivings to him in prayer. And as we come together today, we are continuing to focus on Jesus' resurrection and on his appearance to his disciples uh, at the lake shore. And we remember today that Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let's pray. Father, we do pray that as we meet together on this day to worship you, that we would be aware of the presence of your Spirit speaking and ministering into our lives. Lord, we come before you today with different experiences, different life experiences, different things happening in our lives at the moment perhaps challenges as we look to the future. But we pray, Lord, that you'd really speak to us and minister to us as we worship together this morning. Speak to us through your word. Help us to hear you. Help us to respond to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, my soul, I worship your holy name. 
as we worship God together this morning, as we continue to be aware of his presence, let's confess our sins to him, asking him to help us recognize the ways we fail to hear him, the ways we fail to respond to him, and ask for his help as we look to him for the future. And so we join together as we say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And then the collect the prayer for this third Sunday of Easter. Almighty Father, who in your great mercy gladdened the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, give us such knowledge of his presence with us that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life and serve you continually in righteousness and truth through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The 21st chapter of the Gospel according to John beginning at the first verse. Afterwards, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the di disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, Friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, Throw your net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in, because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple, whom Jesus loved, said to Peter, It is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there, with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you have just caught. Simon Peter climbed aboard and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153, but even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, Feed my lambs. Again Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? He answered, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, Take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, Do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, Feed my sheep. I tell you the truth. When you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. 
but when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. This is the gospel of our Lord. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for your word and pray that you would speak to us now by your spirit, that we may be challenged and that we may be changed into the likeness of your son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. It doesn't matter when Easter falls, whether it's March or April, in our house, Easter marks the start of barbecue season. And because of how often we barbecue in the summer months, even if an umbrella is required, there's something very familiar about our passage today from John chapter 21. At a superficial level, we could just sum this passage up by saying that Jesus meets his friends and they have a barbecue on the beach. If we were to leave it there, it sounds so ordinary. But as we study this passage together this morning, we realize how this seemingly ordinary encounter with Jesus contains extraordinary and beautiful depth, which reveals more for us about the character of God and his heart for his people. And as we seek to plumb these depths together, I have three aspects of this passage for us to think about. Jesus comes, Jesus feeds, and Jesus restores. So John chapter 21 and beginning at verse 1, Jesus comes. We're told he appeared again to his disciples. Christ has risen, he is risen indeed, alleluia. And after his resurrection, as proof of his resurrection, he appears to his disciples. They encounter the risen Christ in his resurrection body, which is somehow both familiar and unfamiliar, both the same and different, recognizable but not necessarily immediately so. In John's gospel narrative he has appeared first to Mary at the tomb but she didn't recognize him until he spoke her name, Mary. Jesus then appears to his disciples in a locked room. He says, peace be with you and breathes the Holy Spirit on them as a foretaste of what will come on the day of Pentecost. A week later Thomas finally encounters the risen Christ, his Lord and his God. Thomas sees nail marks, he stops doubting, and he believes that the impossible is possible with God. This is what an encounter with Christ offers for each of us, hope, faith, and love. And John has one final encounter in his gospel for us to picture and learn from today. It happened, we are told, in this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. And they go and do what they knew best. They go fishing. It maybe seems strange that the disciples who have had the Spirit breathed over them have gone back to doing something so normal, something of their old life when they fished for fish before Jesus called them to fish for people. But in these days before Pentecost, we're invited to, the, to imagine the disciples' very understandable disorientation. So much has happened so quickly. The one they saw kneel to a cross, the one they saw breathe his last breath, the one they saw buried in a tomb. This very same Jesus is not dead. He is alive. But how can this be? The disciples thought that all hope was lost, but now with every encounter with the risen Lord, hope is stirring. Embers are beginning to be fanned into flame. All that Jesus has said and done is beginning to fall into place for them. And with every encounter with the risen Lord, they are realizing that God is truly at work. Christ is risen. Death is conquered. God is at work building to the climactic day of Pentecost when the Spirit will fan gospel mission into flame and the church will burst into life. But in these in-between days, as the disciples wrestle with what it all means, they do something familiar, something they had done for most of their lives until their ordinary lives were interrupted by an extraordinary call to follow Jesus. It's almost like they just needed to take a breath, to process everything by going through the familiar motions of casting out to sea, casting nets and hauling in fish. But not for the first time, they catch nothing. And not for the first time, Jesus comes and everything changes. 
The ordinary is once again interrupted by the extraordinary. A voice calls from the shore as dawn breaks. Friends, haven't you any fish? Fishermen knew that if you hadn't caught anything during the night, your chances were not good in the morning. So when the man on the shore says, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some, it was advice that these frustrated fishermen probably didn't want to hear. But this was not just good advice. This was a command and a promise from the risen Lord, a sign that God is still at work. Something in this man's voice must have been different, different enough that instead of responding by saying that they knew what they were doing, the fishermen respond by obeying and throwing their nets on the right side of the boat. And when they are unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish that they have caught, everything changes. Jesus has come. These fishermen's eyes are opened and the disciple whom Jesus loved says to Peter, it is the Lord. You can feel the excitement of Peter in this passage. Peter who is always quick to respond and bold in his response. He jumps into the water rushing to meet Jesus who has come to meet his friends. The Lord has come and he comes to us just like he came to those disciples. On those days when, like the disciples in John 21, all your labor feels in vain, when you're not sure what to do next, when you just need a sign, when you just need hope, look for Jesus. Look for the glimmers of hope that come with the dawn and in your looking, you will find the one who is already there, the one who has already come to you. You will find Jesus Christ, the one who calls you friend. The great truth about any encounter with Christ is that he is already there waiting for us and by grace opens his eyes to the truth of who he is. Jesus comes and the disciples once again encounter the risen Lord and then Jesus feeds and his disciples feast with him. There is almost nothing better than coming home after a hard day of work to find food is already made for you. And the disciples certainly in this passage have been hard at work all night long. They would have been frustrated, exhausted, and now in awe of a net full of fish, which will have taken the remainder of their strength to bring to shore. But as they come to shore in verse 9, tired but excited to be with Jesus, a fire is already burning, fish is cooking, and bread is ready. The disciples can hardly believe their eyes. Verse 12 tells us that they are wanting to ask who Jesus is, wanting to confirm that what they thought impossible has truly happened. But at the same time, amidst these doubts, amidst this struggle to understand that they already know in the depths of their hearts that the, their Lord has come. It is almost too good to be true. But with eyes of faith, the disciples are realizing that God is doing far more abundantly than they could have imagined. The crucified and risen Lord sits on a beach with his disciples and says, come and have breakfast. He comes, he takes bread, gives it to them and does the same with the fish. Here we have a beautiful picture of intimacy, of fellowship, of friendship with Jesus. Jesus feeds his people. He cares for them. He provides for them. The invitation to feast with Jesus, to enjoy friendship with him, is the same invitation offered to each of us today. This invitation is overwhelming, but it captures the heart of the gospel for us. We, though we are unworthy, imperfect people, are invited to feast, to enjoy abundant life in the kingdom. And we are invited by the one who alone is worthy, the King of Kings himself. Jesus, who is love incarnate, bids us welcome, feeds us, nourishes us. Love bids us welcome. This is abundant grace, extravagant love, overwhelming hospitality. Love welcomes us home back into fellowship with the God who made us and who always desired to be with us. Such love that the Father has for us. Now imagine yourself in Peter's shoes. 
He was bold in proclaiming Jesus to be the Messiah, but quick to deny him. Now his excitement on the beach is turning to awkwardness as they eat together. What would Jesus say? What would he do? When they finish eating, the moment finally arrives. Jesus turns to Simon Peter, but he does not rebuke him. Instead, Jesus restores. His grace is enough for Peter and for all of us. Three times he asks, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And twice Peter replies, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. On the third time, Peter seems to be hurt. Maybe he hears the echoes of the three times he denied Jesus. And so he says, Lord, you know all things. You know I love you. Jesus looks at Peter, knows his heart, and restores him. The one who said he was the good shepherd now calls Peter, who is imperfect but who loves Jesus. Peter is called to feed Jesus' lambs and to take care of his sheep. This is a weighty call. Jesus cannot promise that it will be an easy mission, but it will all be to the glory of God. There is a gospel to proclaim. There are people to care for, all after the example of Jesus himself. The Good Shepherd has set the pattern for his disciples to follow. And it all starts with going back to the beginning of the disciples' extraordinary life with Christ, the call to follow him. Verse 19, Jesus says, follow me. We must follow him. The one who comes to us is calling to us to to encounter him afresh, to fall in love with him anew. The one who feeds us is inviting us to feast with him. The one who restores us is inviting us to put our faith in him, to know forgiveness through his death and resurrection, and to know fullness of life as we take our place in his flock. Follow him. Follow him and your life will never be the same again. Jesus comes, Jesus feeds, and Jesus restores. And this is good news. It is life-changing news. It was for the disciples as we read about them in John's Gospel. And an encounter with Christ is life-changing for all of us today. Jesus comes, he feeds, he restores, so that we can love and follow him. So that we are equipped for gospel mission. So that we are strengthened to love God and love our neighbour. When we encounter Christ, who has already come looking for each and every one of us, when we feed upon the bread of life by faith, when we are restored by our good and gentle shepherd, we, like Peter, are commissioned by him, transformed by him, and sent out in the power of his Spirit. Now, nothing can be the same. May that be so for us. May we give our life and our all to love and follow the King of Kings who gave his life and his all for us. Amen. Let us pray together. 
sovereign and loving Lord. You are good and glorious in all ways and only you can provide the peace and the hope that this world is searching for. Today our hearts are many for so many dangerous and difficult and different situations. It can be hard to know where to turn, what to do or how to have hope. But the cross and the empty tomb remind us that even in the worst of situations, you are there and working for a greater good. Renew in us that hope we pray, O Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Creator and ruling God, you alone bring all of creation into order by your word and by your will. You hold it all together and sustain the world in which we live and work and have our beings. Today, our prayers are many for a world at war, a world, a world suffering from the effects of natural disaster, and a world where human sin abounds. With heavy hearts and with pleas for peace, we pray for the ongoing conflict in Syria, Yemen, Libya, the civil difficulties in Af Afghanistan and Iraq, the wars and the violence in places like the Democratic Repub Republic of Congo, Myanmar, and the civil violence and tension in northern Ethiopia. Lord, where there is violence and war, we ask that you would bring about lasting peace and grant wisdom to all who lead to do what is right for all people. And Lord, as we remember places affected by conflict, so we pray for places affected by natural disaster, such as Haiti and Tongo. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for the people of Ukraine at this time, for all who are suffering or afraid, that you will be close to them and protect them. We pray and continue to pray for world leaders that they would have compassion, strength and wisdom to guide their choices and to do what is right. And we pray that in this moment the world would do what is right. That we would stand with those in need. That we would welcome those who flee violence. Lord, bring about a betterment and an improvement of the situation in Ukraine. And we pray for lasting peace and an end to the invasion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, you are kind and merciful beyond our understanding. And as we pray for far off places, so we are reminded of how connected this world is. We pray for the Church of Christ as it meets across the world, a body that is diverse in worship style and gathering, but yet united by the cause and hope that is ours through faith in Jesus. We pray for our partners in the gospel in such places like Meridi and South Sudan under Bishop Moses, friends in Albany Diocese and those known to us throughout the world. We pray that you would strengthen your church to meet needs, both spiritual and physical, but above all, to be proclaimers of Christ crucified and the hope of the empty tomb. As we pray for our church across the world, Lord, so we pray for the Church of Ireland at this time. Renew in us the hope of Christ. Renew in us the confidence of the gospel. And may we be those who live crucified lives of love and of service so that the hope of Jesus is made known across Ireland. And as we pray for the Church of Ireland, so at this time we pray for our gathering of the General Synod next week as that body meets to make decisions and to set about the direction and resources of the Church of Ireland. Grant wisdom to all who will meet there, Lord, and may all be done according to your word and according to your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. As we pray for people far off, Lord, and the church of the world, so we pray for ourselves here in the parish of St. Patrick, this town that we call home, the village of St. Patrick and the town of Banbridge. Renew in us the call of the gospel, the work of the Great Commission to go and make disciples here. Bless our church at this time, and we pray for the newly elected vestry that has been chosen to represent, that they would have wisdom and the courage to do what is right and necessary. Bless our diocese, David our bishop, bless Roderick our rector, and use us, Lord, we pray, to build your kingdom here in Banbridge. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the good things that are ours. 
the common graces that we enjoy each day, such as lengthening evenings, warming days, the beauty of friendships with family and friends, the knowledge of loved ones known and unknown. And so, Lord, we thank you for all that is good in our life. But as we are thankful, so we are mindful of stresses and strains. We pray for those who face anxiety in this day, such as rising fuel costs, rising food costs, and simply worries about each day. We pray for those who have any other sort of need, whether in sickness or in health, in body, mind or spirits, whether through the loss of loved ones, bereaved or long ago. Those whose hearts are heavy by the toils of life. Those who care for them and worry for them. We take a moment of silence to bring before you all whom we know to be in need and the prayers of our own hearts. In the silence we have prayed with the assurance that that which we have sought you will hear through faith in your Son. And so for our prayers said and unsaid, we commend them to you as we say, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Almighty God, you are the fountain of all wisdom. You know our needs before we ask and our ignorance in asking. So we ask this day that you would have compassion on our weakness and give us those things which for our unworthiness we dare not ask and for our blindness we cannot ask. For the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, as we conclude our prayers using the words he taught us to say, Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And the blessing. May the God of peace you brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, draw each one of us into a living faith in Christ as Saviour and Lord, and may he then strengthen us by his Spirit to live for him and fulfil his will. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us this day and forevermore. Amen. And then just in terms of announcements, uh, you should receive a letter from me uh, this week. There's quite a bit of information in it, so please do take time to read it. There'll be information about the parish accounts as well, so please do look at those. And continue to pray just for the ongoing life and work and ministry of the church. Uh, our services continue each Sunday in person. This service continues online each Sunday as well. And the other activities that are mentioned in the letter, uh, please do pray for them and do spread word about the things that are happening as well. Please do be involved in all the things in which you can and encourage others to be involved too. So may the Lord bless you and keep you until we meet again.